I'm Matt, this is Mr. Maple Video. Today we're in Kyoto at Monkey Park. Oh man, cool video. Here, here, hand me your thing. You just turn video on, you don't have to do anything. I don't know how to do that. Your video on. Hey guys, welcome to the Mr. Maple Show. Today we want to take you guys to Japan. Well, not literally. Uh, we're not flying anybody to Japan per se, but we did take a trip there and saw some pretty amazing things that we'd love to share with you. I'm Matt, by the way. Hey guys, I'm Tim. We're MrMaple.com. We're a mail order business. We ship directly to your door. We specialize in Japanese maples and we do over a thousand varieties. Yeah, that's pretty crazy. So sign up for our weekly emails on MrMaple.com. We had 10 new trees every single Tuesday at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. That's something you'll really want to check out if you're into Japanese maples. But today we've got a journey, one of our journeys in Japan. Uh, we're really excited about bringing you this stuff. We've been, we recorded a lot of things in Japan, but now we just have the talent behind the scenes with Brian and Corbin to be able to go in and edit these and turn these into right. awesome videos for y'all to enjoy as well. Yeah, they've made us look good. They've cleaned up our, our visuals here a little bit and got our audio right. So we want to talk to you a little bit about our trip uh, to Kyoto, where we went to a specific monkey park, and we saw some Japanese maples, and, uh, you know, we're, we're just nuts for, for uh, monkeys in Japanese maples. That doesn't occur too much in the United States. It's fun to see monkeys in the wild. It's fun to see Japanese maples in the wild, and monkeys and Japanese maples together. Yeah, we're doing a video. It's crazy because this video and stuff was filmed when our YouTube channel was called Mr. Maple Video instead of Mr. Maple Show. And then we realized videos were going out of date. Right. <laughs> and uh, this was such a fun adventure. I mean, getting to see all these, the Japanese snow monkeys, as they're called. They're macaques. Yeah, they're macaques. They're, they're, uh, they're kind of dangerous. They're not really as tame as you think. You think of these little cute little things running around here, and they get pretty wild. And the funniest part is when they get pretty wild, that guy runs out and dumps the food. That's actually after they're kind of, I guess they get rewarded for their bad behavior. I try not to reward my kids for bad behavior. But so when they start really showing out, that's when they get their treats. So this all took place on mine and Matt's 3,000-mile journey in Japan. We drove 3,000 miles in Japan, and I'm a crazy planner. I sit down and plan everything out. Well, one thing I didn't plan was for Matt to call an audible. <laughs> yeah, so we're in, we're in Kyoto, and, uh, you know, I'm looking around at things to do in Kyoto, and we had a free day, really. I mean, we didn't have that much to do that day, and I'm like, dude, we should go to this monkey park. We're not that far from it, and there's Japanese maples all along the way. It says there are, you know, massive trees along this hike, and I underestimated the hike as well. But while we're in Kyoto in this area, I'm like, we should go see this. This could be super cool. So we got super lost first off driving there. I, normally, Tim has it down to just such a science. When we're driving, like literally one of us is driving, one of us is like navigating and dictating. And like, so one of us is driving, one of us is like, there's going to be a left up ahead. Tim has it down to, he has printed pictures of the place we're going in hand. So if you're going to a nursery, we're looking at an actual picture of the nursery from Google Earth. And so we're like, hey, when you see bales of hay, <laughs> we're at the right place. But uh, it makes it a lot of fun, and he, he definitely plans and makes it all amazing. So we were visiting some temples in Kyoto and just enjoying that. I mean, visiting what is there in, in Kyoto. I mean, it's amazing. Kyoto is one of my favorite places in Japan. It's, uh, you know, it's, it's historic. Uh, a lot of Japan is really crowded, but Kyoto is kind of a romantic town in that it's it's very old school. It was the original capital of Japan, uh, you know, in a long time ago. And it's all laid out in a format that's very different from the rest of Japan. So everything's very spacious. And so it's not all tight like if you're in Tokyo. And and for that reason, I think it has a, you know, a real romantic feel to it. Like, for, you know, much younger example, for but lack of a better term, being from the South, that reminds me of like the Charleston of Japan. It's like the classy, everything's kind of a little bit more romanticized. And there's just a lot of cool kind of it has its own culture to it for sure. And this was our first trip to Kyoto. And during our first trip to Kyoto, you know, we didn't know exactly which were the best temples to go visit for uh, Japanese maples in Japan. We visited some temples that were pretty amazing, but we didn't visit some of the temples we'd visited with the TV show on the second trip. Right. And on our first trip, we went around and we said, you know, these are, these are really cool. But while we were in walking around Kyoto, 
we saw these signs, and Matt said, whoa, whoa, whoa. Dude, I'm going to the monkey park. What, what is this? I was like, I, I didn't monkeys. plan for it. I was like, I don't care. I'm going anyway. So it probably took us a couple extra hours to get there. Full disclosure, because we had, I, me- I remember some crazy turns down one-way streets that I could barely walk down. <laughs> but but we got there. We, we made it. We found some signs. We eventually found this monkey park, and uh, we were well on our way. And we w- walk across this bridge, and there's this river uh, coming down through Kyoto. Oh, I mean, so beautiful. I don't know what you call these. I mean, they're almost like gondolas. Like, people had big oars, and there were tours getting on these boats. It looks so much fun. I wanted to see that more. Uh, it's just gorgeous. It reminds me a lot. I say this a lot, but it reminds me a lot of where I'm from here in Western North Carolina because we have spacious mountains with beautiful rivers. Uh, we don't have Japanese maples growing natively there in that landscape, though. And so I'm always in awe because it looks like home, but it looks completely different when you get into the details. If you look at big pictures you know, of mountainsides, it looks very similar. And it reminded me a lot, like you said, exactly of where we live. We mm. live in a valley, Hendersonville, North Carolina, East Flat Rock, North Carolina, and around the edges of the valley, there's a lot of mountains. Mm-hmm. And the city is more towards the center. And that's exactly what happened here with Arish- Arishiyama Monkey Park. We start walking, we walk across, across, and then we realize we're going up a mountain. Oh my Arishiyama gosh, mountain. I underestimated. I'm a big guy anyway, but I underestimated this hike in. When I say 45 degrees, that probably doesn't even do it justice, dude. It was straight up. So we start hiking up this mountain, and you start getting into these funny warning signs. So there's several of these warning signs we went by. Like, I think we'd already paid our money at this point here. Uh, We'd already paid our money at this point, but there's, like, pictures that say, you know, don't stare into the monkey's eyes, don't touch the monkeys, don't feed the monkeys outside. Uh, there There were things that said don't take pictures of the monkeys, don't squat near the monkeys don't really anything. So like every single thing you could do while you're up there that you've just paid to go do, they're like, don't do any of that. Like they don't like cameras. They don't like eye contact. (laughs) They don't like anything. Like the whole reason you're going up there is to take photos of the monkeys. And when it says, don't point your camera at the monkey, you're like, right. What am I supposed to do here? (laughs) Because please keep more than two meters distance at all times. Well, like there's, they're running, they're, they're everywhere. running everywhere. There's 120 monkeys at Arishiyama Monkey Park. Please they're, don't point they're wild smartphones monkeys. or cameras directly at the monkeys. Please don't crouch down. <laughs> like, okay. Yeah, so we're already getting a little freaked out at this point. We're like, man, what have we signed up for? And uh, it, was a, it was a pretty intense hike. So we get up this mountain. We're starting to go up the mountain a little bit. And uh, every few feet we're greeted by like more warning signs like, the monkeys are going to go crazy. And on our hike, we actually, you know, got off the beaten trail a little bit to look at some different trees. Uh, this one was actually in the path, but there were 60 to 70 foot plus Japanese maples in the ground. Now, we've seen taller Japanese maples than the tree at Hopewood Estate. Yeah. They, they were definitely taller, but none of them had as thick of a base, but they did have pretty thick bases. I and mean, you see me right here. I'm not a skinny guy. Right. And I might have been a little skinnier then. We should use me. I, we normally use me because I'm an ogre, and so I make a perfect example when like, like you put me beside the tree, and you're like, "Wow, Matt looks tiny." <laughs> you're like, "That's a big tree." So this thing's massive, and uh, it, you know, I would easily estimate the one Tim standing by in the picture at like over 50 feet. So they were massive, massive Japanese maples all up and down this trail, and that was pretty amazing in itself. Mostly Acer palmatum, subspecies palmatum, so our small leaf green, very similar to what we use to graft to. This was before we did a lot of our hiking in Japan. This mm-hmm. was our very first beginning of a hike in Japan. And this was probably the most trail-like of any of the trails that we had been on. Smash that like button if you want to see a full video on our hikes in Nico National Park. And I promise you, you do. So as we're going around through here, I mean, you you just see palmatums off in the distance. And you're like, wow, this is pretty spectacular. I mean, there's just Japanese maples growing everywhere out here in the wild because we're in Japan. I mean, this is where they grow naturally. Right. And then we make it to the top. Yeah. We kind of come in by this little barn area here. And so full disclosure, these, uh, these monkeys aren't enclosed at all. They are wild monkeys. The reason they stay around here is because apparently they're fed. So they know there's easy meals, you know, at this location. So they show up here, but these monkeys they come and go as they please. I mean, you could run into this monkey in the parking lot. It's not like it's it's enclosed in this location. 
And you see this coming up, and Matt and I were like, okay, so these monkeys are like right up next to you. And we're like, you know, that monkey can just climb right over that fence. And then we get up there, and they're climbing all over the building. They're all around. They're hanging off the edges of the building. You'll see some footage here in a second, but these monkeys were kind of going buck wild. Like this, uh, this seems uh, a little tamer than what they're actually going for. They they are jumping around like crazy. You get in this big open area where it's just kind of like the uh, the showroom floor, if you will, at the top of the mountain there, and uh, they're just coming in from all angles. So some of them are still in the woods, some of them are in the uh, you know kind of the feeding zone area, and then some of them are playing in this waterfall area. But they're all just kind of randomly getting loud and running through. So it's kind of crazy. And if you see this monkey sitting here next to this chair, the guy who sat in this chair was a guy that was basically the caretaker of the monkeys. <laughs> and he fed them. He ran them off whenever they started getting aggressive towards right. towards people. And that definitely happened. I, I tried to take a photo of a, a monkey in a tree. And unlike all the other monkeys, it ticked him off. This monkey decided that was a sign of aggression. Hey, it was the monkey the sign was meant for. Exactly. He came running down the tree and started running towards me. And then this little Japanese man, who's half my size, comes and runs off the monkey. And yeah, they kind of had like a stick, and they just kind of hit him with a stick and say, hey, quit quit fighting people. Mm-hmm. And uh, and then they get some food. And so it's like, you know, if you're a parent, maybe not the best behavior to, like, reward the, uh, the going buck wild on everybody there. But they start fighting, and then... They start playing some music and they throw out a bunch of food whenever they start fighting. So it's kind of crazy. And everything up there is kind of, I would say it's got a level of chaos to the whole situation because you have these monkeys just constantly coming in. And some of them are coming in in like packs, just 90 miles an hour out of nowhere at you. And, and they're chilling, but then out of nowhere, they're just everywhere. And as you can see here, this is a monkey that might have actually been running towards me <laughs> whenever the, uh, the guy came running. And scared him off. And you see, he's pretty close. He's pretty darn close. <laughs> Tim so, had some pretty big eyes going on during that. So we're walking around with like a GoPro. We've got some cameras with us. You see the monkeys playing around right. with each other in the background. They start fighting. It gets loud. And I think there's a couple like this chilling. And then out of nowhere, there's like 40 of them. So like it's fine when there's like five or six and everything's kind of chill. But then you get surprised when randomly, you know, a whole army of monkeys shows up. I mean... There's this cool little water feature, and we started filming some of these uh, monkeys playing around the water feature. And it was so cool to see them just playing around in the water, seeing them playing around uh, with each other. And just an awesome little thing to to see whenever it comes to monkeys. And these Japanese macaques, I mean, they just would run all over towards you. I mean, they would run towards you. They'd run away from you. You'd turn around, and there'd be one sitting at your feet. And I remember so, at one point there was, a, I don't know if we even filmed it, but there was a a baby monkey that fell into this pond and it wasn't really swimming too well. The mother monkey jumped in to save it. It was kind of crazy. I mean, they're bathing in the water. They're just having a good time. Again, you see this monkey, he just walked over beside of us. Yeah, they're, and they're very, uh, they're sidlers if you're a Seinfeld fan. They kept creeping up on us. I need some Tic Tacs to... Uh, to show us because you'll be standing there and everything will be quiet. And then you'll look down at your feet and you're like, Oh, Oh, there's, there's like a macaque literally like two inches from you, Tim. They're, they're not afraid of the humans at all here. Uh, they are very just adventurous and very curious creatures. And they really just had, it was such a fun time just running around there. That one just and grabbed so, a koi. <laughs> yeah. They're, they're really just having fun this whole time. Having fun up here, having a party, and eating a lot of food. I mean, this was this was fun for us. I mean, I've been to zoos before. I've never been in the zoo before. So it was very different, and uh, it was just a fun time. This waterfall was very pretty. I mean, I, it's well, very well maintained up here, and it just has a lot for these monkeys to do. Again, this is all outdoors completely, so there's no, there's no obligation for these monkeys to stay around here. They've just kind of made a spot that they like. And, uh, you know, there's there's regular monkey feed here, so they, they know there's some good food if they hang out. I think one of the things that was fun just to watch all these monkeys play the whole time, I think we spent hours up here on top of this mountain. And that's the reason we have so much footage and so much, so many camera shots from this place is because it was such a fun experience. I mean, I think if anybody is ever in Kyoto, this is such a fun experience to, to go up and enjoy. 
and there's more to see than the monkeys. We'll get into it, but there's a lot going on here at this park. Uh, there's a few other things. Of course, there's Japanese maples, and we saw monkeys in those trees. But, I mean, there's so much going on here. It, it really blew us away, um, the beauty of this area. I mean, uh, Kyoto is one of my favorite places in Japan. Like I said, it has that romantic feel to it. Um, it just has that old world feel to it. Like like Kyoto, you know you've been somewhere that is is very different than where you're from. And it, it has that that, you know, other period type feel to it. You, you know how ancient Kyoto is when you're there and you just have a reverence for, for how it's laid out. Like, it's so interesting. I like the canals. I like the spacing, the bridges, everything about it's so beautiful. And, uh, it was really fun to get up here because spoiler alert, we get into one of the best views of Kyoto I've ever seen. And it's just amazing. So there's a lot going on. Yeah. For me, this was such a fun time because I mean, I've always loved animals, and I've, monkeys are always really cool. But like Matt said, I've never been able to experience wild monkeys in this way. <laughs> right. And to see these Japanese macaques that are these Japanese snow monkeys, I mean, it's amazing to see what these animals are doing and how they're living up here. Do they Kyoto. creep right up on you, too. You're sitting there chilling. And it's quiet, and are you like talking to Tim? Like I'm like, hey Tim, look at this. And you know, we're in Japan, so Tim and I, we're loud, boisterous people by nature. If you hadn't noticed, I mean, we do a YouTube channel where we talk to you every single day, so we're kind of loud, talkative people. I mean, I always got in trouble in every class I was ever in for being loud, and uh, now my kids do that, and it's kind of funny to me. But I'm a talkative guy, and my voice carries. And so in Japan, I'm trying to be very respectful of that, so I'm being quiet. I'm trying to be more reserved. You know, even hearing that intro when I'm talking to people, I, I, t I talk very softly so that I'm not, you know, very, uh, I'm not trying to be, you know, a rude American and be super loud. I'm trying to fit in there and be quiet and talk real respectfully. And and because of that, Tim and I are whispering to each other. We're being very quiet and mannerable. And then out of nowhere, it's like there's a monkey on you. <laughs> and so they, they creep up in that quietness and then you're like right on top of one. Yeah. And I mean, it was this kind of thing, you you wouldn't find this in America. I mean, you couldn't find... Uh, I don't think Americans could do this. I think they'd mess with them too much. I don't know. There's there's definitely a collectivism in Japan that leads to, you know, really clean streets, really clean everything. And uh, I, I think you'd have too much outside food in America. I don't think people would be respectful of the rules and not bring outside food in. And on top of that, these are wild animals. Yeah, I mean, you wouldn't find anywhere in America where we're feeding wild bear or yeah, we're feeding I, wild raccoons. I don't know how the legal system's set up in Japan. I hadn't studied that, but that seems like a lawsuit waiting to happen. If you, you throw that bad boy in North Carolina or South Carolina, I'm pretty sure pretty sure we got a good old boy grabbing him a monkey. And uh, <laughs> I'm pretty sure you got some monkeys, uh, you know. They, they go buck wild, right? I mean, they're they're jumping on stuff. They're... They're there and they're wild animals and and you know it. Like there's no uh there's no hiding the fact that you're in their domain. They're not, you know, in your domain, they're you're in their domain. And uh when they roll in five or six deep real loud and aggressive, you know, it, it can you can get pretty excitable and you, you can see why they uh you know, why they why they love this area so much, because this is gorgeous up there. I mean, this whole place, I mean, we're just looking at this water feature now. That was pretty spectacular. Um, the building here, I mean, this is where people could go inside and feed. This was one of the rules is you couldn't feed the monkeys outside of this building. So you could go inside this building and feed the wild animals when you're in the cage. <laughs> right. They put you in the cage to feed the monkeys because they get a little too aggressive around some of the food. But... Uh, let's look down at Kyoto. Do you see the known place is what it says. The American translation is right. And then you look out and you've got this amazing view. Yeah. So we've been, we've been hiding the view this whole time, guys. So the, the building is, is to your back right now. If you're looking at Kyoto and really, this is one of the premium reasons to go. There's Japanese maples. I would have loved to hit this in peak fall color. And we're going to show you more about the Japanese maples here in a minute, but this is one of the most premium views of Kyoto. Uh, it's gorgeous. Uh, I'm, I'm, it's a photographer's dream because you get up on top of this mountain and Kyoto's right behind you and you really can't take a bad picture. We got up there on a fairly clear day. It wasn't the clearest day. Uh, you, we could have even found a better day, 
But uh, the view is spectacular. I mean, I was just in awe of being able to understand how we hiked, where we came up from, and you see that river we crossed earlier, mm-hmm. and now you know we're up on top of the mountain above Kyoto. And you can just look off in the distance and see Kyoto and see Monkey Park right here on top of Arishiyama Mon- uh, Mountain just enjoying the view. I mean, the view was amazing. And yeah, pair with us, guys. We had some old tech back in those days. We got like a GoPro on a stick. <laughs> on a selfie stick. <laughs> right. That, that, you know, it was just me and Tim. That was the only way we'd get shots of ourselves. And it was gorgeous up there, though. I mean, I really, these photos don't even do it justice. There is almost a sense of being in the view. Uh, there's a lot of times where we went to take pictures and, you know, monkeys jumped into our view or jumped onto the, the screeners there. And, uh, yeah, they were just going crazy in there. I mean, to me, this was one of the things where just enjoying the view was almost as good as seeing the monkeys. Oh, I don't went up there just for the view. I mean, it was awesome. Here's Tim with the selfie stick, taking some old school selfies. Really, it's a GoPro because back then that was some of the best tech we could have. And so even when I was going around Japan, I had this head mount. And so some of our hikes and stuff in Nico, I just stuck the head mount on my head and kind of ran around. We're finding some of that footage, too, so we'll see if they can sort anything out. So this photo is one of my favorite photos the entire trip. Uh, we asked someone, hey, would you take our you know, Nikon D7000, which at the time was like the most expensive camera. Uh, we, we spent a ton of money on that camera before this trip. And uh, anyway, so we hand our Nikon off to a very trustworthy person, and we say, hey, will you take a picture of us with Kyoto in the background? We have to have this shot. And the funniest thing happened, like Tim and I go both go to get on these little viewing stands. And while I'm standing there, if you look uh, at the bottom uh, at the bottom of the picture there, there's a macaque on the stand with me. I never saw that, that <laughs> monkey the entire time we took the picture. I didn't know until we looked at the picture later that there was a monkey standing there with me in the picture. You'd went and stood on the stand, and the monkey joined us for the photo. Right, right, right. <laughs> so, yeah. so we posed for the picture, and then there's a macaque like right beside me. I mean, that, that's just one of those things where when you're here at Monkey Park, you have that constantly. I mean, the... They're sidlers for sure. Yeah, they just come up and just stand right beside you. They kind of like... walk silently and you look down and you're like, oh! They like the sense of community and they see the people up at the top as part of their community. And <laughs> they're up there fighting with each other and sometimes they get mad at you too. I don't know if they saw you as part of the community. Tim, Tim had a couple run-ins. <sighs> But yeah, the view up here is second to none. So if you're ever in Kyoto, you know, I definitely recommend it. Uh, it's gorgeous. You, you feel like you're on top of the world up there. And the view is gorgeous because you're standing over all of Kyoto. It's in that valley region, so it's all flat. So you can see so far into Kyoto. I mean, I don't even know how far we were seeing here, but it's miles and miles and miles. And, and then, the, then you have the, uh, you know, the danger that a monkey's going to bite your face off at any moment. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this was just such a fun uh, excursion. And then getting back to where everybody was paying a lot of attention was in the feeding room. Yeah, I mean, so we, we signed up for this, and you pay for it separate. So you pay to get in, and then you pay for some food. We're like, hey, man, we're up here. Let's go feed these monkeys. And here we are here. Just You just see these monkeys, and they're all just paying attention, so much attention to this this feeding cage. Right. And like I said, we're the ones that go into the feeding they cage. They make a real big deal, too. They're like, hey, it's super, super dangerous, so you have to go behind this cage. But then you just walk out the door and you're in the same place. Like you're, you, Tim's literally taking the picture in front of the building that is four feet from where we're feeding the monkeys. So they're like, the, the instructor makes a really big deal about it. They're like, hey, whatever you do, make sure you're back here when you're feeding the monkeys. They're like, what about all those people that are just standing right there? And the monkeys really are only paying attention to the people in the in the cage. For the most part. And it's it's one of those things where you can just sit here and just watch the monkeys and their unusual interactions because, I mean, everybody is just sitting there trying to feed and enjoy the, the monkeys. And the monkeys are just paying so much attention to that feeding area. And if they get hungry, they just run over to the cage and get some food. Yeah, so Tim and I, we did a lot of hiking when we were in Japan. We got out there, and we didn't really think about it a lot until we are already in the woods. So we went into Nico National Park at the first of this trip. We went a lot on a lot of different hikes. I believe on this trip we actually hiked the Oshino Trail with Augustin Coelho Vera, who we have a podcast with. Uh, we weren't with Augustin during this part of the trip. We went to World Maple Park, too, so we did a lot of cool things. But one of the things is we were actually out in Nico. 
And uh, that's really what led to this this epiphany that we wanted to go see the macaque, uh, you know, the monkey park. Is uh, we're like, uh, have we looked up what's in the woods with us yet? Because we're like out in the middle of nowhere. Like me and Tim are like hiking through, like around Mount Fuji on our own. We just got really adventurous and we went and did a lot of stuff without really thinking about what was in the woods with us. So we're like, Hey, what, what's out here? Do they have like bears. Can we have bears in Western North Carolina? What's out here? So we started looking it up. We're like, Oh, macaques are really prevalent in this area and Tanuki. So, you know, we'll, maybe we'll talk a little more about Tanuki later, but those are the two main wildlife. We did see one at Nakata Sons too, a Tanuki. It's like a raccoon dog. Well, we've made it up here to monkey town. Now it's time to go inside and feed some monkeys. Yeah. And at this point, we said, you know, let's go in the cage. We, it's time for us to go in the cage. Let's go inside and actually feed some monkeys. And that, that's when I, 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 I was excited. And we actually got to go in there. Here's Matt actually feeding them. And they fed them mostly fruit, different fruit. Yeah, it was all natural stuff. It was really, it was really pretty cool. It was, a, it was a decent setup. Well, there was that and cut bananas. I don't know if yeah. bananas are native to Japan. No, but it was all good stuff. It wasn't like dog food or anything. It was like actually things they would, they would need. Now, this is one of the things that made me laugh. One <laughs> By of the, the way, I did not break this rule while we were there. I did no smorking. <laughs> a lot of times when you see these Japanese tr- uh, translations into American English, sometimes there's a mistake. And same thing there. Like, yeah. you'll see the same thing here when you're here. People have tattoos that say funny stuff because of the language barrier. And same thing there. Uh, you know, I think I broke every rule except for the no smorking. I did take pictures. I did crouch. <laughs> I did take cell phone photos. I did make eye contact with some monkeys intentionally. Uh, yeah, I broke all the rules, but I, d- I didn't smork any while I was there. At least while you're in the cage. Uh, no smorking. No smorking in the cage. And we had such an awesome time. I and mean, you're sitting here and you're literally feeding by hand monkeys. I mean, it's just a, a fun experience. And the monkeys just hang on the cage. And you just sit around and feed them all the food that you got whenever you hand them, uh, you know, this to- this totem that says, hey, I paid for a bag of food. Yeah, it was more touristy here. I liked it, though. It was fun to see it. My, my favorite thing up there was the, was the view and, and, and just getting to see monkeys in Japanese maple. I mean, it's just getting to feed wild animals. Where else do you get to do that? <laughs> yeah, I don't think you're supposed to do that most places, to be honest with you. But it was kind of fun to experience here. Here's us with the selfie stick throwing uh, a little bit of feed out to a uh, macaque. Here's two monkeys together. Hey, now. I mean, just getting to do this, such a fun experience. And we're about to get into why I think a lot of people – joined us on this adventure yeah so we were hoping to you know a lot of the lower areas oddly enough were more in fall color so we went by a temple when we when we hiked up here and maybe we'll do a video on that too there was some great fall color going on there already actually a little past fall color in some areas so it was interesting it's it's such a different climate when we got up here most of the japanese maples uh maybe it's because it's a sunny spot on top of the mountain but most of the Japanese maples in this area were still not into fall color. We, we would love to have hit it in peak fall color, but it was pretty cool. We were seeing, we were, Tim and I were going around looking at different, you know, native growing Japanese maples in the landscape with monkeys everywhere. Now, one of the things that probably knowing what about Japan now, we've got, we went to Nikko starting off mm-hmm. and Nikko was just starting fall color. Yeah. Whenever we, whenever we got off the plane. Well, we went back later. And, and caught it in peak fall color. Yeah, and when you're doing that, you realize you're traveling south down the equator. Right. And when you go further down south, down to Kyoto, it's just a lot warmer. Yeah, yeah. And so their fall color is just going to be a lot later than it would be. I mean, 3,000 miles is a long way to travel. Right. And Kyoto was one of our, I mean, Nara was our, our furthest point south we went on this trip. But Kyoto was pretty close to Nara. Right. And... I mean, there's a lot of elevation changes. People, people don't realize how big Japan is either. I, I once heard it said, and it, you know, this might be accurate, but that Japan overlays over basically the original 13 colonies of the United States. So if you take the original 13 states and you make those into the size, they're equally the size. So I mean, you think of all the way from Maine down, it's a pretty big area. You think of Japan as smaller, 
Uh, you know, maps are funny because you look at the globe and it's down here, so it's relatively small. But if you made it the, the actual size, it's really big. Well, you see a Japanese maple in this photo, and you see these monkeys fighting, and we just have some shots, camera shots. <laughs> that was still, a battle royale everywhere of this, of this monkey wrestling match going yeah, they, on. They they got into some some heated discussions for sure. When you're in Kyoto and the Japanese maples aren't quite in fall color yet, the next best thing to do is maybe to watch a monkey in a Japanese maple. Now we're seeing monkeys and Japanese maples. Yeah, it was pretty cool. I mean, both both natively occur in there, so it only makes sense that the uh, the macaques would, you know, seek refuge in some of the the smaller flora there. And they're getting into these Japanese maples. Most of them are like 20, 30 foot maples. Uh, some of the ones around the the edges of this and smaller, younger trees. You know, all these are seed grown, of course. They're native plants and uh, just sticking out of the landscape there. So we're walking around. We kind of got off the beaten path a little bit. We got away from like the uh, the feed area walk down some of these little side areas that I don't know that you're necessarily supposed to be in. But uh, I would say that was definitely where the monkeys were more aggressive as well when you got away from the building. That is for sure. I mean, Matt's sitting here taking a photo, and then a monkey comes sits down in front of him, and then I walk up like, hey, Matt, smile. <laughs> and just getting a photo. I mean, this monkey just came down, sat down right in front of him. But there are monkeys all in these Japanese maples. And this is the reason we went to Monkey Park. Right. Because if you're in Japan, and there's monkeys in Japan – you got to see monkeys in the Japanese maple. I mean, that that's the cool thing about this is getting to see these monkeys just running through these old Acer palmatums. I mean, these are huge trees, huge trees. You see Matt standing beside this tree. This is a really old Japanese maple. We're probably 100-plus years old. Yeah, we'd be taking pictures, and, uh, you know, we'd kind of tick off some of these monkeys when we were just walking through or taking pictures. And so uh, some of them are low like this one where they're near you. And some of them just come flying out of nowhere and jump out of the tree. <laughs> and so you immediately kind of look away and, and change what you're doing a little bit and, and kind of move on. And then there were some that were just chilling and relaxing up in the trees. It was such a cool area. I loved going here for the view. Uh, obviously, we love seeing Japanese maples. So we're trekking around this area off the beaten path. And uh, some of these monkeys, you know, they, they, you can get kind of close to them in these Japanese maples. Sometimes they get a little aggressive. You have to kind of quit doing what you're doing and look away pretty quickly. Uh, you know, you're not that far from them. And they kind of come flying out of some of these trees. So some of them are happy. Some of them are not so happy to see you. So you kind of got to look down, divert what you're doing, take the shiny object away, and move away from, from the monkeys. I mean, you got to realize these monkeys, they're monkeys. They jump from tree to tree, then they can come right. running down right beside you. And they're running around these trees this whole time. And they're having just time just up here manicuring each other. And uh, really just running through. I mean, they're just be picking bugs and stuff off of their uh, friend's back <laughs> and just relaxing in some of these Japanese maples. So too. we were walking through these groves of Japanese maples and just enjoying our day and then occasionally getting back up top to see that view. And it was just a fun thing. I mean, the further, like I said, the further you get away from, uh, you know, the instructor there with the stick and the food. I would say definitely the more aggressive you get with the macaques. We got a little adventurous. We, we, we snuck off a little bit. These maples were pretty cool looking too. You know, my friend Kojima, he, he describes uh, a lot of the maples that he likes to grow at his nursery as uh, mountain style. Yeah, mountain style. And so they're windswept. They're trees that aren't necessarily cookie cutter shapes. And uh, I often tell people, you know, in America that are looking for a cookie cutter shaped Japanese maple, I'm like, kind of the beauty to these things are that they're each unique and different. So, you know, getting out into the native habitat and enjoying these on the side of a mountain. And, you know, they're, they're definitely not all cookie cutters. It was one of the things I loved about these Japanese maples up there is that they were all diverse shapes. They're sticking out of the sides of banks. And uh, they probably had been shaped a little bit from these monkeys jumping on them. I mean, the, kind of the branches were pretty gnarly. And also just the weather and being up there for so old, I mean, you get old trees on the top of a mountain. They're going to have really unique shapes. And then you add monkeys constantly in them. And they're definitely going to be very <laughs> unusually shaped and very different. Yeah, you really just don't get this anywhere in America. It was pretty cool to see. Uh, you know, maybe if you're at one of our open houses, we'll let some macaques go. <laughs> <laughs> no. But this was a little baby that was running around. Everyone's trying to photograph. I thought it was super cute. This was probably one of the smallest monkeys that we saw the entire time. And he was just running around in between everybody, just like all the other monkeys. Right. He would kind of get away from all the, uh, probably his mother monkey, and then uh, and then she'd run back and scoop him up. 
And this was right after a, a kind of a big monkey fight. Like they kind of got a little buck wild uh, and aggressive. And uh, so they played the music and that kind of broke them up a little bit. Some of the, I guess some of the older male monkeys are in there. And this and, was this was right about the time Matt and I were about ready to hike down. Right, right. We're and, like, what is going on now? And this was just a fun feeding. I mean, these monkeys just are so excited, and it changes their behavior completely when people walk around and grab the food that's in the cages and run around right. and hand it out to the monkeys outside. Uh, it was a good day in Japan. It was a fun hike. You know, we got some monkey WWF. We got some uh, Japanese maples, and we got an amazing view of Kyoto. That was really one of my favorite parts. I think the uh, the monkey fighting and wrestling was pretty fun, too. Of course, they were wrestling other monkeys, but it's just kind of like a battle royale the whole time you're up there. And you definitely stay on your toes a little bit with these things coming around you. And uh, it was just cool to see. I mean, I think these were uh, probably peanuts, maybe. I don't even know. But they were feeding them a bunch of food. And uh, this, this happens kind of right after they all get riled up, generally. And again, these are wild animals. I mean, I can't reiterate that enough. These animals stay here because they're fed. They're not here because people put them there. They're a, a wild <laughs> right. population of monkeys that could go anywhere. Right. And they're staying around here. And you constantly saw that with the tourists there too. People get a little too close. And, and then they're like, oh, 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 yep, yep, yep. Not a, not a tame monkey. I need to be backing up. And one of the things that was really cool was getting to see Japanese monkeys running around in Japanese maples right. with this amazing view. I mean, that was just something that was... Super spectacular, super amazing, and something that I never really expected to see when we first made yeah, our plans I mean, we in called Japan. An audible, I think it was a fun audible. Uh, we, we went to mostly nurseries, and and really, you know, we got immersed into the wildlife there. We actually went out into the woods and did a lot of hiking on our own. This was one of the more touristy things that we did on our trip, but we had a blast. I mean, it was it was a fun little side thing to get out on, and I wish I wish it would have been perfectly clear that day because I mean I don't know how far you could see. We saw. We saw an amazing view either way, uh, but it seemed like you were really on top of the world there, and it was just so much fun to experience uh, Erishiyama Monkey Park, and I, I definitely recommend it if you're in Kyoto, checking it out. It's a, it's a fun time. Maybe you can catch peak fall color up there. Uh, there's a lot of temples that are near this that have some amazing Japanese maples around them as well, and uh, if you like this kind of thing, let us know. Maybe we'll break down some more Japan travel uh, Tim and I are kind of experimenting with these videos, kind of taking you on, you know, a retrospective trip with us uh, through Japan. Uh, we've got tons of content from World Maple Park to Nico National Park, uh, you know, World Maple Park's Yano-san's place, and just some really cool stuff. I would love to take you guys with us to Nakakomoto Weeping and just talk a little bit about some of our favorite things that we've ever seen uh, in travels to Japan. Uh, we're also thinking about doing some live content, so let us know in the comments section if you'd like to see that. We might do a full live reacting to our episode of Nipo Niki Tai. And guys, if you like this, I might even go through. Uh, it's mostly uh, photos, but I would love to take you on a trip uh, with me to World Maple or to uh, uh, Gloucestershire to uh, Westenburg Arboretum, and and take you on our trip with Peter Gregory. So if this this kind of retrospective kind of thing is something you'd be interested. in, let us know in the comments section below. It's a little bit different kind of video for us, but we love making content. And this is some stuff that made me and Tim smile, so we wanted to share it with you. If you're a monkey who loves Japanese maples, hopefully you enjoyed seeing monkeys in Japanese maples in this video because it's something that we love doing. And this was just such a fun experience that we had to come and share it with you. I know that we've. it's a little bit different going in and doing a whole video about monkeys in Japanese maples rather than Japanese maples themselves. But I hope you enjoyed our travel trip to Arishiyama Monkey Park and seeing monkeys in Japanese maples. Take care. God bless. Have a great day. <laughs>